Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. Welcome back to the range. You know my YouTube analytics tell me that my turkey hunting shotgun videos are the least watched videos that I post here on my channel, but I don't chase the algorithm. I post videos that I wanna post about firearms that interest me. And this time of year, being a turkey hunter, turkey hunting shotguns interest me. A couple of weeks ago, I posted a video on the Mossberg 940 Pro Turkey and great shotgun, excellent turkey hunting shotgun. But I got a lot of comments saying that that was an expensive turkey gun, it was too much. And it is an expensive gun, it was about, I don't know what he paid for it, I didn't ask him, but I'm guessing plus $900 and then you put a, a $300 red dot optic on it. Uh, you know, you're looking at $1,200, $1,300 in that shotgun as, a, as, it, as it was set up in that video. So I get it. Today, I wanted to show you one of the best values that I see out there. This actually belongs to Chase. He's been on the channel a couple of times. Big time channel supporter. He's all time sending stuff over. But uh, this is his new turkey gun for this spring. And it's the Gerson, or Gersan, not sure how you pronounce that, I'm sure I'll get corrected in the comments, MC312 Gobbler. And that's what we're looking at today here on the channel. All right, so before we get too far into the video, I ask you guys to excuse my voice if it sounds weak and crackly today, because a lot of these trees are starting to bloom out and my body just don't like it. Also, the neighbor kids, are out riding their dirt bikes today, so you may hear that going on in the background, hear those engines running. Tell you what, I don't blame them. We've had some crappy weather the last week or so, and today looks like it's gonna be really nice. If I were their age, I'd be out looking for a dirt bike or something to ride too. So, this shotgun is made in Turkey. We're looking at a Turkish made turkey gun. It's imported to the United States by EAA. It is a 12 gauge, semi-auto, has a three and a half inch chamber, a 24 inch barrel, and it does have a dual bead set up. Well, actually it has a bead here, mid rib, and a fiber optic out front. Comes with five of these nice extended choke tubes. They are the Beretta Benelli mobile choke style. The stock is dipped in camouflage, and it has the pistol grip stock. Now, if you don't like the pistol grip stock, they are available without the pistol grip. This pistol grip, if you do like them, this pistol grip is really nice. It's rubberized, very ergonomic, and feels good in the hand. The steel barrel and the aluminum alloy receiver are both finished in Cerakote. Not sure what color they call that. I've heard some people call it bronze. It doesn't really look like a bronze to me. It's more of a coyote uh, tone to it. Looks good though, they've done a good job with it. And this receiver has an integral Picatinny rail, which is a really nice feature, especially on a gun of this price point. I don't know why we don't have that on more turkey guns. That allows you to run a reflex sight, and a lot of people are running reflex sights on their turkey guns nowadays, and keep it low. You know, you can keep that sight low to the bore with that integral rail like that. You're not, you don't have to add a rail on top of the receiver like you do with a lot of shotguns. That allows you to, to get on the target quicker. You're not playing turkey peeped over the log looking for your red dot. You can actually get a cheek weld and still see your dot out there. And having a good cheek weld like that's also gonna help you mitigate the recoil off of those heavy turkey loads. Just a, a much better setup when you can mount that sight low like that. And speaking of sights, this shotgun actually comes with a red dot sight. So a shotgun in this price range that comes with the reflex sight is just uh, just unheard of. So I'll show you this sight. I'm not real knowledgeable about this sight, but I'll just kind of give you an up close of it here and, and kind of just show it to you. Okay, I'll show you this reflex sight that comes with the shotgun. Now, there's no brand name on this site anywhere, and I don't have the owner's manual. So everything I'm gonna tell you here is just my observation about this site. It is a large reflex site. Here I've got the little Burris Fast Fire 3 on the 410, 
and as you can see next to each other it is quite a bit larger than the Burris Fast Fire 3. I would call the Burris a micro reflex. This one is not a micro. Has a quick detach switch so that you can pull it off of there and it is mounted on that low cut integral Picatinny rail. I don't like the quick detach switch being on the driver side of the gun I'll call it because I grabbed this bolt handle and I have ripped the hide off of my thumb when I grab this bolt handle and rack it back I'll hit this switch this lever so I wish the lever was on the other side but it don't look like you can do that it doesn't look like you can just switch it over maybe I'm wrong it appears to be a 3 MOA dot I put a target up at 100 yards and I put a 2 inch 3 inch and 4 inch bullseye on that target and the dot was very close to the size of the three inch bullseye. It's a very nice dot. You can't see it through the camera lens, but it's a nice little crisp dot. Uh, works really well. Elevation and windage adjustments are where you would expect them to be. And it appears, just from messing around with it, they're about one MOA per click. Battery comes in from up top. There's your cover. It's a 2032 coin battery, so really easy to find battery. I have no idea what the battery life is on this thing. I flip through the settings. You've got six brightness levels. And to turn it on, just press either button. And to turn it off, press either button and hold it in for a few seconds. But that's really all I know about this site. So there you go. I'll go over these controls with you. It does have a magazine cutoff switch, so if you need to cross an obstacle like a creek or whatever, you can press this magazine cutoff and just pull the one round out of the chamber instead of having to cycle completely through your magazine. Pull that one round out, it locks it back. After you cross the obstacle, toss your round back in, press your bolt release, you're good to go. That bolt release is nice, it's easy to press. I've seen some of these bolt releases that are just really, really stiff. That's not one of them. Nice oversized bolt handle. Very easy to get a hold of, even with a pair of gloves on. The loading port has been cut away to make it very easy to load. Again, even with gloves on. Got a cross bolt safety at the rear of the trigger guard. Very positive engagement, both on and off. Recoil pad is not much. It's very hard. It's not going to do much at all to help mitigate felt recoil. Comes with uh, sling swivel studs, one in the back and one up front. The magazine on this will hold five two and three quarter inch or four three and a half inch or four three inch. It is plugged when you buy it new to comply with hunting laws. But the plug is very easy to remove. If you wanted this to do double duty as self-defense, uh, you know, home defense or something like that, you can easily remove the plug. Just take your magazine cap off and pop your plug out. Put your magazine cap back on. That's all there is to that. And they do make magazine extensions for these to add more rounds if you need to. Again, if you're going to, you know, have this pull double duty as a home defense gun or something like that. All right, so this shotgun empty and with the reflex red dot sight that comes with the shotgun installed, comes in at 7.63 pounds. The trigger pull on this shotgun is a little heavy. I measured six pounds, seven and a half ounces. I did take multiple measurements and that was about the average pull and it was really consistent. And it's not a terrible trigger, just a little on the heavy side. So what I've got here is a turkey target set up at 40 yards. It's the same turkey target that I use in all my videos. And I've got a load of 
Federal TSS. This is a three and a half inch Magnum. Has two and a quarter ounces of number seven shot in it. I uh, don't have the camera on autofocus, so you're not going to be able to read that. I don't know why I held it up to the camera. But keep in mind, and most of you guys know this, this is not my shotgun. This is one round with one choke tube, and that choke tube is a north wind with a 660,000th inside diameter. But this is just, this is one combination. People get these turkey guns, they'll try different choke tubes and different loads and things until they find one that it really likes. I'm just showing you guys just a, a basic pattern with this shotgun that I've never shot this load out of before. So it could be a bad pattern, could be a good pattern. It's mostly just for fun. So let's go ahead and shoot that turkey. And this is not going to be pleasant. We'll see if this red dot, uh, red, little, 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 red dot. <laughs> we'll see if this red dot is zeroed as well while we're at it here. I'm gonna hold right on his head. Gosh! Woohoo! Man, that is a beast. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Shooting Magnum turkey loads off the bench. <laughs> Woo, it'll put the smack down on you. Let's go check this target out. So it's decided to rain a little bit today. I didn't think it was going to, but it's raining on me right now. So I'll measure this with a laser range finder, guys. I, I try to give you a honest 40 yards when I do these just so you'll have something to compare with and you can duplicate. That red dot is zeroed perfect. And that is a dead tom. Those uh, number seven TSSs actually look pretty good. That's a, that's a nice uh, 40 yard pattern. You don't wanna get, some people strive to get too tight. You can get too tight with the pattern. And then if that turkey shows up at 20 yards, you, you can miss them real easy. So that, to me, that is a nicely dispersed, good-looking, even pattern. The action on this shotgun is basically just a vanilla inertia drive. Manufacturers are copying or cloning that action. And with good reason, it's a good action. It's very fast cycling, very clean, very few moving parts. You know, it doesn't have, there's no gas ports, no gas piston or anything, so it's not blowing, fouling back into itself like on a gas gun. Uh, you don't have uh, powder fouling and plastic and uh, carbon all blowing back into the shotgun. It's all blowing out the barrel. So it makes for a very clean shotgun, very easy to clean shotgun. If you're the kind of guy that only cleans your turkey gun maybe once a year, right before turkey season, you know, you may prefer the inertia drive uh, system. It's just easier to take care of. Now, the downside to it, it doesn't mitigate the recoil nearly as well as a gas-operated shotgun. So you're going to feel all that recoil, or not all of it. It does reduce it somewhat, you know, over like a brake action or something. But compared head-to-head -to, -head to a gas shotgun, uh, the inertia drives are going to kick a lot sharper because they're so fast, you know. It's a lot sharper recoil. The gas guns spread that load out over time. Now, turkey hunting is a lot more hunting and a lot less shooting. Uh, I only shoot a couple of times per season. So uh, recoil may be over talked about a little bit on a turkey gun just because you know you just don't typically shoot turkey loads that often. But at the same time, the, some of those turkey loads will put a smack on you. Talk about shooting light loads here. I know somebody is going to make the comment, will it, will it cycle light loads? I doubt it. I'm not even going to test it. To me, this is not a shotgun that I would buy to shoot light loads through. This is a three and a half inch 
inertia drive system. The inertia spring, the recoil spring, is set up to deal with the pressures of a magnum load, you know. Uh, I doubt that it would cycle 7 8 ounce or 1 ounce 12 gauge loads very well at all. Uh, maybe it will. I'm not, like I said, I'm not even going to test it. This is like a 4x4 four four of shotguns. You don't go out and buy a big, uh, powerful 4x4 four four pickup truck and then complain because it doesn't get great gas mileage, you know. Uh, there's some things you sacrifice in order to get that extra power, and that's what we're looking at here. I just, uh, if you are going to shoot lighter loads through it, I do recommend breaking it in with some heavy loads first. Uh, it may even mention something about it in the owner's manual. I don't have the owner's manual here, but usually these type of shotguns do require some type of break in. So if you are getting it and intending to shoot lighter loads through it, I do recommend breaking it in with heavier loads first. All right, so I think I've covered about everything that I know about this shotgun. I've only had it here a couple of days. This is basically a show and tell video, not really a review. Again, this is my friend's new turkey gun. He was nice enough to send it over here and let me do a video with it. A very good value as far as a near total package. <laughs> Again, I know I've said this three or four times, but I can't believe it comes with the red dot. That low Picatinny mount built into the receiver, just a... A really good bargain on this shotgun. Now it does have a couple of misses. You guys know that I like to cover the negatives just as much as the positives. And it does have a couple, they're very minor. For one, this camouflage is a waterfowl camouflage. Maybe something, you know, maybe they hunt turkeys in the marshland over there in Turkey, I don't know. But this is a more like a cornfield pattern like you would use for goose hunting on this shotgun. Now no turkey is ever going to know the difference. If you let a, a big tom turkey get in there on you close enough to tell that this is corn stalks instead of uh, mossy oak bottomland or something, well you should have put some lead in his head about 20 or 30 yards ago. <laughs> but uh, uh, the other miss is it doesn't come with a turkey choke. You know it's, it's called the gobbler and it comes with everything you need to go turkey hunting except the turkey choke. Now it does come with a full choke. It comes with five chokes, ranging from cylinder bore all the way to full choke. But most dedicated turkey guns are gonna come with a extra, extra full or something like that to be ready to turkey hunt with. And now I know that most people have got their favorite turkey chokes and they're gonna try different chokes and different loads and things and see what works the best. But it'd be nice if a gun called the Gobbler came with a dedicated turkey choke. Those are about the only complaints I have with this shotgun. Again, I wouldn't buy this if I was wanting an all-around gun to shoot light target loads in. This just, I didn't try it, but just doesn't seem like a shotgun. It's got a really long receiver for those three and a half inch. Uh, there's a, if you're wanting to shoot light loads, get you a three inch gun. Uh, they'll, they'll usually cycle about anything. But these three and a half inch guns are like, again, the four by fours of the shotgun world. You know, stick with your heavier hunting loads in a shotgun like this. That's just my recommendation. You guys do whatever you want to. I'm just telling you what I think about it. But I guess that's all I've got. And I'll talk with y'all again soon.